there's so many ways you can mitigate high cholesterol levels. You'd need a certain amount of cholesterol for your body to function correctly, right? And if you're on a boatload of steroids, you don't really have to worry about the sex hormones and neural steroid cascade because, of course, you can always supplement with those to super physiological levels if you do so desire. Vigor Steve here. Let's talk about steroidogenesis inhibitors, or better yet, the real reason why your hormone balance is all out of whack. A lot of you guys don't think about drug interactions, so I'm going to make a couple of videos over the next couple of months to teach you about potential drug interactions, because one drug might inhibit the metabolism of another drug, or the complete breakdown and detoxification of several different drugs. This is something you have to realize before you start dabbling with particular PEDs or ancillaries. In this video, we're mostly going to talk about the ancillaries, which can inhibit the breakdown or several steps of the sex hormone and the neural steroid cascades. So this video is all about how my life got flipped turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute just to sit right here to tell you all about how I became the prince of drug metabolism. Before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you would like to support the channel, you can do so by joining either the YouTube or Patreon memberships where you can vote for upcoming deep dives or join the weekly vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday, right? It's private for about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. Get all your questions in so you don't have to join the herds of Super Chat Super Floods. So let's get started with the earliest steps in the sex hormone cascade with pre hydroxy 3 methyl glutaryl coenzyme A reductase, abbreviated to HMG-COA reductase. This is the rate-controlling enzyme of the metabolic pathway that produces cholesterol and other isoprenoids. Keep in mind that statins, including monocolon K, which is the um, lovastatin equivalent found in red yeast rice, a natural uh, supplement you can buy over the counter, statins and red yeast rice inhibit cholesterol synthesis as well as the normal functioning of the cell membranes and cell signaling. So you don't want to overdo the statins because otherwise you miss out on all of the benefits that cholesterol has, including the synthesis into sex hormones and neurosteroids. So keep it in mind, use these statins or red yeast rice respectively, because otherwise you're going to have a ton of issues downstream because this is the earliest steps that you have to pay attention to. Now, I'm not against statins. I'm not against atorvastatin or patavastatin or rosuvastatin or so the other statins that we can choose from, but you have to respect them because if you overdo it, again, you might get all of the side effects that are associated with statins, including some of the side effects that are coming from the red yeast rice, muscle pain or muscle damage, increased risk of diabetes, increased liver enzymes in the blood due to liver damage. Statins can also inhibit the coenzyme Q10 uh, production. So even if you're supplementing with ubiquinol or coenzyme Q10, you still might miss out on some of the benefits while you're using statins. And of course, you know, some of these things are important for cardiac function, muscle contractions, antioxidant status, and overall glucose regulation. And if you're currently experiencing any of the side effects which are generally associated with statin use, Keep in mind that there's always alternatives like azetamide, for example, or fish oil with every meal, or citrus bergamot, or daily fasted cardio, or improving your diet substantially. There's so many ways you can mitigate high cholesterol levels. You'd need a certain amount of cholesterol for your body to function correctly, right? And if you're on a boatload of steroids, you don't really have to worry about the sex hormones and neural steroid cascade, because of course, you can always supplement with those to super physiological levels if you do so desire, but you're still missing out on the cell membrane function and cell membrane signaling. So keep that in mind. Look for alternatives if you're having issues with the statins that you're currently using. Next one I want to discuss is 24-dehydroxy cholesterol reductase, predominantly clomiphene, clomiphene citrate, also known as clomid. Right? This inhibits some of the steps of converting desmosterol into cholesterol. So this is one of the reasons why clomid can actually reduce your cholesterol levels besides pushing some of the cholesterol into the testes or the ovaries while you're using it while uh, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormones are super physiological, right, during post-cycle therapy. Congenital hereditary gene mutations revolving around the 24-dehydroxy cholesterol reductase enzymes can actually lead into desmosterolosis, which is a lethal condition caused by multiple organ malformations. It is only observed in infants. Still, it is of note that clomid, clomiphene can increase desmosterol levels by approximately 10%. Now, this is the clinical dose of clomid, which is prescribed in cases of breast cancer. Still, it is of note that higher doses of clomid for longer periods of time can actually increase your desmosterol levels and reduce your cholesterol levels, which you would think is a good idea, but still with long-term exposure, 
might lead to all kinds of issues revolving around healthy cholesterol levels and cholesterol synthesis. And that's beside the fact all of the known issues associated with clomids, particularly the zuclomiphene, right? And clomiphene has now been extensively studied individually, but some of the long-term evidence isn't really there. So let's just focus on clomid and not in clomiphene. That remains to be determined in a couple of years, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, you know, the ocular changes by blocking the estrogen receptors in the eyes, the reduction of serum IGF-1 levels and the increase in liver enzymes, um, blocking the estrogen receptors in peripheral tissue, which would otherwise have the beneficial effects of estradiol and, of course, the clotting risk. So besides the inhibition of desmosterol converting into cholesterol, increasing desmosterol levels by approximately 10%, um, all of the other issues associated with clomiphene is one of the reasons why I don't like clomiphene monotherapy, right? Maybe look into end clomiphene monotherapy if you want to increase your LH, FSH, and testosterone levels downstream. Um, but clomids, all the more reasons not to take it. Moving over to sterile 27 hydroxylase, which is predominantly converting cholesterol into 27 hydroxy cholesterol and thus is regulating the synthesis of bile acids, particularly anastrozole, arimidex. One of the reasons why you see that cholesterol levels go up with using an astrozole or Rimidex to inhibit the aromatized enzymes. A side effect of that is that your cholesterol levels go up disproportionately to the use of aromacin exemeste. And inhibiting this with a Rimidex will downstream reduce the production of bile acids. Now, you need bile acids for um, detoxification, right? Also including bilirubin. So if your bilirubin start to increase, this can lead to jaundice. And you also need these bile acids to help in the breakdown of food and increase nutrient absorption besides the excretion of metabolic waste products. It might even result in constipation if you overdo it. So a severe reduction in bile acids will not lubricate the stool. And now you're mad constipated. Um, I don't think that's a common side effect of an astrozole, but it's something you have to keep in mind. If you go with a Rimidex over aromacin, which is the one I prefer to keep serum estradiol levels in range, then if you go with the Rimidex, Cholesterol levels will go up in the excretion of metabolic waste products, bilirubin, and perhaps the absorption of fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins will go down. Keep this in mind. Next one, the cholesterol 7-alpha hydroxylase enzymes, which also help in the synthesis of bile acids. These are inhibited by cataconazole, nizerol shampoo, which is an anti-androgen, antifungal, and anti-glucocorticoid medication used in the treatment of a number of fungal infections. But the topical shampoo formulations are used off-label to prevent hair loss caused by androgenetic alopecia. So what are you using? Testosterone, dihydrotestosterone derivatives, or currently drug-free? Ketoconazole is usually used to improve hair growth and prevent um, hair loss uh, when DHT levels are somewhat elevated, right? Um, of course, you can lose, look into finasteride and dutasteride that come with a longer list of side effects. And don't worry, we'll discuss them a little bit later on. Inhibiting bile acid synthesis with ketoconazole, if that's a 2% or 5% shampoo formulation that you're using once per day or twice per day, eventually the canaconazole can go systemic and thus the reduction of bile acids might take place, resulting in all kinds of issues with the excretion of metabolic waste products, like I mentioned earlier. Right? Keep that in mind if you're using canaconazole and don't worry, canaconazole will come back a couple more times. So don't worry, at the end of this video, I'll include a list of all of the compounds which can inhibit multiple steps, multiple enzymes, in the sex hormone and neurosteroid cascades. Stay tuned to the end so you have an overview of these compounds and all of the deleterious effects that they might potentiate with chronic and overuse, overexposure.